Hey folks, today we're gonna be grilling some chicken on the Santa Maria accessory for my kettle. Now, the big difference compared to the, most of the time I cook chicken is we're gonna cook it over direct heat. Now, even though we cook it over direct heat, it's gonna be medium heat because otherwise the chicken's gonna dry out. I'm gonna show you how. Also, to make things improve just a bit, we're gonna spatchcock it. I'm gonna show you how to spatchcock the chicken so we can cook all parts like the thighs and the chicken breast at the same time and get them done at the same time. And I always keep mentioning brines. Uh, almost all the time I use dry brines, 99% of the time, but this is actually a very good case where we're gonna use uh, wet brine and I'm gonna show you how. The reason I don't like wet brines is typically it's messy, you can get the same thing accomplished with the dry brine, but for chicken I think that's the number one exception. Because, it, well at least when you cook a whole chicken because you have the skin and everything, so this one really lends itself well to wet brine. To do that you need any old container that you can put the chicken in. Uh, the trick is of course to make sure the container isn't too big because otherwise you're going to have a two gallon brine which you're just going to have to waste away later so I try to find a container in this case a pan that fits the chicken just right I think this is just about the right size or just a bit too small but good enough so how do you make a wet brine well um, we're gonna add the chicken I'm gonna leave it in the fridge for uh, most of the day until in the afternoon when we start grilling so so far it's right, quite easy slippery sucker into the pan without touching it. That's right, looking good. So it looks like I managed to calculate the amount of water just right because it's not overflowing and that's good. We don't want to create a big old mess. So the prep is easy. Now this goes into the fridge uh, and in a short while I'm gonna make a nice uh, red kale Asian style slaw that's gonna go really well with the chicken. So stay tuned. Now we're gonna make the red kale slaw. So I'm going to start out with fish sauce, four tablespoons, actually six, six that's almost a deciliter, that's good. This adds a really nice salty flavor. I'm going to add plain sugar, two tablespoons, and I'm going to grate some ginger. You can add as much as you like if you think it's getting too strong, perhaps you should just cut back on it, but I really like ginger and it adds such freshness. And just a bit more. Also gonna add some lime juice. This is uh, juice from two lime fruits. Uh, and that also adds a really nice tang of freshness. So that's basically the liquid we're gonna add. Not that much, but we're gonna stir a bit and then we're gonna add some red kale. And the kale I slice with a mandolin, it's quite easy. And then we're gonna mix it up and just leave it in the fridge for a few hours. But this is gonna add some nice color, but there's a good flavor in this. What I do is I take it out one hour before and flip it a few more times to get those flavors well worked in. But that's it basically. So here's the bird, brined and ready, and spatchcocking basically means we're going to flatten the bird. And when flattening, something has to give, in this case, the spine. So you cut with the pair of scissors down both sides, and that way you can open it up. Any old kitchen shears or scissors will work for this. Like that. Now you can Flip it open like that and push it down a bit, crack the breast cage and that's it. Now we have effectively spatchcocked the bird so it's ready to cook. And 
now I'm gonna apply some fish bait rub because it's rather herby and that's gonna add some nice flavor. And I'm gonna leave it in the fridge for another hour before we start cooking. Now I mentioned my Santa Maria accessory and this is, uh, I really like this. You can buy this commercially. I did buy this myself. I'll put a link to how I built this uh, the video when I built this so you can check it out. Anyhow, it's a Santa Maria style grill accessory. It's any 22 inch kettle. The nice thing about it is you can, ooh, squeaky. Raise the grates, lower the grates as you need to adjust the heat. Because as you know, heat is being reduced by the distance squared. So it's quite efficient to control heat by moving the grates up and down. As I keep saying, either the grill controls you or you control the grill. This is a really nice way of working with it. So it's gonna be good. And uh, like I said earlier, I've been doing a lot of smoked chicken. I love smoked chicken, but now it's time to start cooking over direct heat. I think it's a nice way of tend uh, tending to the fire. It's a nice way of cooking manually and just adjusting temp as you go to make sure it, you hit that target. So what about fuel then? Well, you can use charcoal, you can use wood, use wood, you can use briquettes. I'm gonna go with a really good type of charcoal made from the ash tree. Uh, it's burning really clean and nice, so I might add a wood chunk or two, we'll see, but I'm gonna start out with uh, charcoal. So that, let's load this sucker up and get the fire started. As you can see, they're quite big chunks. So I really like this type of charcoal. Sometimes when it's that big, I split it, of course, but good stuff. And then I'm gonna add some lit charcoal on top to get the fire started. And I mentioned we're gonna make an Asian style red kale slaw. So I'm using red kale, but I'm gonna mix it with fish sauce, which I really like. It's like good, salty, full of flavor. So fish sauce, uh, grated ginger, and some lime juice. Those three in combination are super flavorful. So we're gonna mix that with the red kale and serve it with the chicken. It's quite easy to make. I'm gonna post a link to the recipe in the comments down below so you can go check it out later. But it's quite easy to make. All you need is the red kale, the mandolin, and the ingredients, and you're done. So, and easy is good, I like easy. So the fire is getting up to temp. I can have my hand here for like two to three seconds, which I think is good. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna get the chicken on here, bone side down first because it's gonna protect the meat. And I'm gonna have to adjust up and down as I see fit when we keep going through the cooking process here. But I'm aiming for one hour, one hour cook for this chicken. I just raised the grace just a bit because the fire is catching on and it's getting hotter and I want to adjust it a bit. Also you can see the fat from mainly the skin dripping into the fire and that's causing the smoke. But at the same time it's going to add a nice gentle grilled flavor to the chicken so that's, that's going to be good. So it's gone 10-15 minutes I'm going to do the first flip. Get some heat and some color on the skin side. But this is good, it's not getting burnt or anything, so I think the temp is good. So I've only had it on five minutes, but I'm afraid the skin is getting too much char, so I'm gonna flip it over and cook it mostly with the bone side down. But as always, I have to check and see every now and then. I'm gonna add some oak wood for flavor. I'm also gonna see if I can flip this one again. Legs are almost coming off, but it's looking good. The cook is progressing as it should, so all good. I 
as you can see here the legs came off when flipping it but it's actually easier to flip them all three at separate times so still the same chicken still gonna taste good i'm gonna do a quick check on temps i'm aiming for 70 celsius we're at 52 so 57 on that one that's good so another 20 minutes i would guesstimate i think this thighs should be almost done yeah so i'm gonna move these out to the side just put them on the back burner if you like yeah that one's good all right that chicken's looking good check out the charring on the skin up there. This is almost done, so I'm just gonna leave it for a few more minutes and then bring it back in. This is such a nice way of cooking, like tr very traditional, very simple direct grilled chicken. Although we did cook it over time so it doesn't get dried out and I haven't had much dripping, so overall this should be a really succulent and juicy chicken. Kind of back to basics, which I enjoy. So I'm gonna bring this in, serve it with that Asian style red slaw. It's gonna be good. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next episode.